to order at 702. Are we going to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the, the flag of the United States, States of America and, and to the republic for which, which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So in front of you, you might notice that your agenda looks a little bit different. Um, and that is because select person Stanek um, brought to my attention that he would like to try this agenda to see if it fits our, if it, if it fits in, if it works. And I said, sure, we could try it for the first meeting. And let's see if it flows with our meeting or not. Okay. Um, this is a consent agenda right so I don't think mm -hmm. so no it's what, not what is a consent agenda in this context I, I can't say a consent agenda is actually under robbery because it's um, normally called the consent calendar and uh, cities towns villages you know who typically have a heavy workload with items on their agendas a large number of items that are non-controversial Typically, that have committees that take up these items before the meeting will have uh, will cause a consent calendar to be created. Uh, that is a, 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 it's something where one vote will take care of numerous items, typically without any or without any discussion. So we give members the opportunity to pull items and remove items from the consent calendar if they ask by simple request of one individual. Uh, you cannot do one though under Robert unless you have a special rule of the body authorizing. You have no such rules, so you have to create by resolution uh, authorization to have a consent calendar. Uh, and that's your call whether you think that's workable or not. Uh, it does cut down on, on you know, public participation as far as discussion. That's your call whether you want that. Would that streamline things like appointments? It would eliminate any discussion on the record of appointments. Basically, if this was a consent calendar, someone would move the consent calendar, you'd vote on it, you'd be done, there'd be no discussion. If I may, at the appropriate time, Madam, for a select woman. Well, I, all right, we did the Pledge of Allegiance. Oh, we're not going to do the roll call, but we can go into public comment. Oh, do we want to, let's add to this, the agenda. I can't add to this agenda, can I? What's up? Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's add to the agenda. I'd like to make a motion to add to the agenda to discuss. Uh, so moved. Motion by Chris Bowen. Second. Second by Al Barono. D uh, discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, okay, let's open it up for discussion. Please. If I may, sure. again, I just suggested that we might consider the agenda item, consent agenda. We've used, utilized it at the Board of Education level for several years, and I've been on other boards and commissions elsewhere where we've utilized it. It's a good opportunity, as uh, Council mentioned, to use it for non-controversial uh, ministerial type actions, for example, approving a refund from the tax collector to a taxpayer where there's no, no real issue. Uh, somebody overpaid $300, they simply vote on it, uh, part of the consent agenda, as well as other items. Any individual member of the board has the right to remove the item from the agenda, consent agenda, and add it to discussion. I just think it's a nice vehicle, nice tool to use in the agenda in a meeting, you know, we don't have to do it. But if we wish to do it, we could pass a resolution. Any other discussion? Would that go to, like, the Ordinance Committee? Would that be necessary? I don't think that's necessary. No. I would do it by a res by resolution. Sorry. Yeah, so um, so I, I'm not I'm not seeing the need for it with the way we do business on, on this board. Um, I think that reviewing tax abatements, appointments, that's something that we've always uh, gone down the, the list, speaking of a roll call type thing. We, we go through the appointments 
and we can we bless each appointment uh, and that's to me that's more transparent um, and I believe that people have always preached transparency in government. I know that, um, you know, Karen used to talk about that a lot too, Fred, with we should always have people's votes marked in the minutes to know how they voted on certain things so it just doesn't say 700 or 521. And I, and I kind of like that idea. So putting it in a consent agenda and having to draft a new need a rule of the body because we don't have the vote. I'm, I'm just not seeing it. I'm not, I'm not seeing the, I think it's a nice suggestion. I don't, I don't think this board um, requires it. I, I enjoy the, the back and forth and the discussion about appointments and seeing who got the tax abatements to make sure I don't have a conflict <coughs> with a family member. I always abstain. So I, I don't think that, um, you know, our meetings aren't as long as the Board of Eds, for example. We usually get our meetings done in an hour, hour and a half uh, on average. Uh, and I think that's because of our efficiency. And I know that that consent agenda sounds like it would make us more efficient, but I, I think we're pretty efficient as, as we are. If we had a laundry list of items, I'd probably back you on it, but I'm not, I'm just not seeing the, the value add. I concur. I don't see how it, how it adds any value to our, our present agenda structure. You know, I don't even see a need for it. You know, why do we, roll call? What do we need roll call for? We don't need the time of approval of the uh, last <clears throat> the uh, last uh, board of select persons meeting. I'm splitting well, we, ears here. We do we do approve our minutes from the last from right, the last minute. but you don't need the time. If I may respond again. Yeah. Again, this evening we you placed or. The decision was made to add appointments on the consent agenda. I agree with Mr. Bruno. Appointments should be not on the consent agenda. But we could reserve the consent agenda for the future for other items that, like I said, tax refunds. Al disagrees with me. I think something like that, if there's an issue, a particular refund that you want to take off the agenda, you take it off the agenda and put it on the regular agenda. It's something to retain. Um, that's my feeling. Roll call. The only reason I like a roll call is because with remote meetings, watching meetings, don't always know who's at, who's at the, the meeting, at least if it's articulated. And plus, I've often seen that minutes are missing somebody who was present at the meeting. So if there's a roll call, everybody answers present. The clerk, secretary knows everybody's present, and it's also on the recorded part of the recorded record. That's just some of the suggestions that I was making. That's all. But, you know, the consensus is otherwise. I'm the new kid on the block. I don't want to disrupt everything, so. And it's not about disrupting and the new kid. We're always open for new ways of thinking, new ways sure. of doing things. And I, I never want to shoot down somebody's idea. I always sure. want to listen. I always want to hear. Go ahead, Chris. Um, I think it's a fantastic idea. I think it was great, too. But I think I'd, I'd like to see if there's a need first. Um, so respectfully, I concur with my other colleagues that I think the way that we're doing it currently is sufficient. Because at the end of the day, the onus is still on us to review everything. Okay. So, go ahead. Well, the, with the point about the roll call, I'm not, I'm not seeing that as a, as a bad idea then after what Fred said. I would want to... Um, think about it and like Chris saying is is there a need is and what is the value add to that because we know our secretary she just she does a great job she captures when what people are present when they come in if they come in late she puts the time in parens at the top of the uh, the minutes if they come in late that's that's just how most minutes that I've seen but um, I can see how on zoom that would have been yep. good because you want to know who's there because sometimes people Correct. just come in and you don't know they're there and hey I'm here at the meeting and nobody knows who it is if their camera's not working but now that we're back in person I, I'm not so sure I'm kind of I'm kind of torn on that one I don't but do we even have the mechanism for some people to be remote during our regular meetings no no then I think it's then I think that is the decider then if we had mixed meetings where some people were on Zoom and others, then I would see a more more of a value add. So you're seeing it as something to 
consider if, in the future if we have to go if we have to on, on zoom again to, to yes. meetings where we can't meet in person yes <clears throat> if the numbers keep rising right then, then that would make sense and and i can see that then then absolutely i would absolutely say we use this if we have to go via zoom mm -hmm. but if, while we're in person then i would say we go back to our well, we just keep it right. yeah, yeah. And generally, anyone speaking at a Zoom, we've all been, <clears throat> we've all been in, <clears throat> in, involved in them through various boards that we've been on, not only this board, but most times when we do have a Zoom meeting before uh, someone speaks and is recognized by the, the chair, they usually say Pat Lombardi speaking or Fred Stanek speaking or whomever it is. But I see no problem with it, uh, with a roll call for Zoom meetings. Uh, in the future. Okay. Glad we had this discussion. Yes. That's what this means. Thank you for discussing these issues. Yeah. I mean, that's that's what we do. We discuss things sure. because we all have to work together, right? To make sure where everybody's coming from. And with that, if everybody's good with that, we'll the next meeting we'll go back to our normal. We'll, we'll be one, one one more thing, Emory, because there's another thing about approval of agenda. So I wanted. Yeah, I, I wanted somebody to speak to that because I don't. I'm not really sure what that means. I don't what know it what is. That means I'm I'm a little confused on that myself. I kind of would defer to Mr. Stanek on the select person Stanek on this is because he uses the, they, they use this in the Board of Ed. So what we don't mean? use approval of agenda in the Seymour Board of Ed, but another town where I represent a board uh, does use it, and it's used to uh, add to the agenda early on, so that if anyone wants to think about a new item, it's not just added immediately and discussed later on. It's added early on. Again, it's just a suggestion. Okay. Anybody else have anything else? I'm not vested in that item. Well, you oh. can under 1225 the statute add an item any time to the agenda at a regular meeting by two-thirds. Yeah. Two right. So you cannot restrict someone to add the item at the beginning. You may want them to. Right. But you can't. It, it's just the policy of this particular board. Okay. Now that just I like you folks have a certain way of doing business, other boards have other mm -hmm. ways of doing business. Sure. Different. Yes. Okay. Well, thank you. Now I'm clear on it. Okay. Is there any other questions before we move on? Oh, I see. All right. Thank you. Yeah, it's fine. Circle. Uh, just, just that uh, this is kind of picky. I, I don't really, I mean, I like Roman numerals and everything, but I don't think they're necessary for our agenda. I kind of like the numerical, well, just regular numerical. numerical. Yeah. Okay. That's it. Okay. I did so. not suggest the Roman numerals. I <laughs> okay. So you can't, you can't point fingers at me. Yeah, because I'm like, I don't know what that is. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Thank you. I have to get out my calculator and figure out what the numbers are. I'm a Jets fan. What's a Super Bowl? <laughs> exactly. I'm a huge Jets fan. Dana's going to love that one. <laughs> Roman numerals. She's going to get right on that for you, Rocky. Okay. So we're open the floor to public comment. Is there any public comment? State your name and address for the record, please. I'm Paul Roy, 80 Washington Avenue, also chairman of the Seymour High School Sports Hall of Fame Committee. <clears throat> and tonight I wanted to inform your members of our uh, inductees that will be inducted to the Hall of Fame in April. We're doing one in April, the April 30th. We're doing it then because we weren't able to have one over the last couple of years. We're doing a makeup in April and another one in November. Okay, so yeah, it's pretty ambitious, but we, we were pretty much along to this class before we stopped meeting. Okay. So uh, we got a pretty good class coming up. Um, certainly, I remember all the names. I don't know if there, anybody else will. Unless <laughs> 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 you heard it from your family. <laughs> but anyway, um, the class of 1959, Jim Teradyne. Can okay, you spell his last name? I'm, I'm sorry, I know we really can't, but can you spell his last name for the record for Marsha? 
Jim Taradine, T E T A R A D I N E. Okay. From 1959. Fred will know the next person. It's Jim Anderson from 1972. Fred, I'm not trying to give away your age. But <laughs> I know he's your classmate. I? He's my class. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so then uh, let's see. I'll try to go in order here from the class in 1974. Melissa Tottenham Drose. Uh, some people know Melissa from being an uh, uh, educator. Okay. Um, and then from 1983, Tim Renison. Uh, Tim was, and this year, we've gone <coughs> away from the main sports that have been played in, over the years. Uh, with Jim Anderson being cross country and, and track, and, and Tim Renison as well. So, we're, you know, we're, we're doing a little bit better, getting more information on uh, other athletes that, uh, you know, <coughs> know so Nin 1984, Bobby LaRoe, he played all three sports, football, baseball, basketball. Um, and from 1994, Mike Mudry Jr. Okay, so those wow. are the inductees. Now, we typically give away an award to someone who has made outstanding contributions to the, um, the sports at Seymour High School, not necessarily an athlete, uh, but anybody else who made some kind of a contribution. And again, uh, we, we've gone back to a retired educator, um, and this, so this year the award is going to go to Ray Necchio. Um, and I got to tell you, for those who know Ray, yep. um, from our committee, as soon as his name was brought up, it was unanimous. So we didn't even really have to discuss it. So uh, that's what the class is going to look like. Um, we, we tip, we're going to have our December meeting. We're not going to meet in January because the weather is some, uh, we have some, uh, People are, let's say, people are older than myself, that are <coughs> so that uh, sometimes it's a little tricky for them to get out. So we will start in February. We'll get more information out uh, about about the banquet. It's going to be a Bill Bianca, uh, like I said, on April 30th, uh, and certainly everyone invited to attend. Tickets will be going on sale. It'll be in the paper, and uh, it, it'll probably be on the website of the high school. We, so we have the Voices in the Valley Indy here tonight. Do you mind if they put the names out and when they do no, the... No, it's okay. Okay. Uh, we've, we've contacted all the recipients. Everybody knows, and they have, they have contacted us back. Okay. So, I and I usually do give Gene a press release. I haven't gotten to it yet. <coughs> we just got, got, got this stuff going. So, uh, yeah, it's okay for these well. That's not a problem. Not a problem. Get to check. Okay. Just wanted to check. So, any questions? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Is there any other public comment? Any other public comment without that? Okay. Can I have a motion to approve the minutes from the October 19th regular meeting? So moved. Motion by Pat Lombardi, second by Chris Bowen. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Noes? Abstains? I will abstain. Marsha, please note Fred Stanek's abstention. It is 401. Chair votes off. <coughs> Thank you. And Madam Chair, yes, Chairwoman, yes. if I may ask counsel, I was not a member of the board at the time these minutes were recorded, so I think an abstention is in order. But in the future, if one of us misses a meeting, do we have to abstain, or if we make ourselves familiar with the minutes, we can vote to approve or to disapprove? Good question. The latter, you can vote on. Okay. Thank you. It's in Robert's rules. Well, just if some people abstain. Yeah. I would abstain. Okay. Okay. So, next one is reports. Uh, the next one is the first select women's report. I'm trying to go off of two different agendas here. Select Women's Report. Actually, it's actually Economic Development Consultant Sheila O'Malley. Sheila has started working with us uh, six days ago, so we <coughs> wanted to give her a chance to put some stuff together. She will present at our next meeting in December, which is December 21st. 22nd. Thank you. Because that's a Wednesday, right? Correct. Because we don't have our meeting on a Tuesday. December 22nd. Will you be here? Do I have the time? And, and after that, if you have any questions. 
Um, so Sheila will give, I can tell you that um, without taking the wind out of Sheila's sails right now, she has spoken to, I can say hammer. many people <laughs> she's spoken to many people and there's many things she's working on okay so she'll she'll be here for the next one discussing the discussion and possible action regarding online tax payment agreement in your agenda packet you have a point and pay e-payment service agreement that Dana Fleck, our tax collector, will gladly discuss with everybody and speak about. Dana Fleck, tax collector. Point and Pay is our current uh, credit card, debit card, e check collection uh, company that we use. We've been using it for a few years now. This is an extension of the, uh, an upgrade of the contract. They will now. Um, so we have different things that they're upgrading. You can set up the payment date, like if you were doing it online at home, like banking, you'll be able to uh, have a, a dashboard where you can log in for future things on repetition payments. Um, you can also change if you wanted to have text alerts or, or with it. You can get your history, which you can still get now. Um, you can get statements, you can get a, create a profile and stuff like that. Um, so they can also, um, this is in addition, they also right now on our, where we have it, if you have pay with your debit card, right now we've only been taking Visa debit for $3.95. If you use a MasterCard debit, you end up getting whacked with 2.5% fee. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's the same as a credit card, which people understand it. And you, it's a false at the credit card. So yeah. people are getting confused that they don't go down. Well, I wanted to be pay it with a debit card, then we have to go in and void it. So the drop down's not showing up as easily, is that what you're saying? Right now, that's how it is. Okay. So oh, that's how it is. Upgrade, when we sign up, if we sign up, if we sign up for the upgrade, it will have credit card, it will have debit card, and it will have e-check. The three options will be right, right there. Right there. And, okay. In visibility. And they will also now accept MasterCard for $3.95. Oh, good. Okay. So we won't have to deal with any of that issue as well. Anymore. Nice. And that's all free of charge. Um, we did look into another, well, another company contacted us and we went to that, the demo with them. They wanted $100 a month from us for doing basically the same stuff that we've been having all along. And with our, when you pay online with a check and it comes to us, you have to look it up and print out a bill because it's just a check that comes to us with no, nothing on it. They wanted to charge $50 a month to review those and $0.50 cents per check mm -hmm. to process it. And, and, but this other company does it for free. Right. And that part of it, they don't we, for we free. Can handle that part. Of the online checks because they go to the lockbox or they come here and we just, if it goes to the lockbox in Hartford, they can't process it because there's no bill with it. So it gets rejected and they overnight it to us and we just process it manually like we have okay. in the past. Um, but it was something that we were looking at as well for different options and this their new stuff and it seemed pretty good in those days. They said it was free, so it's like free is for me. So that's why. Free is for me, yeah. So, yeah. yeah there was questions on it or. So I we'll, we'll, we will be able to generate reports off of it, too, or stuff like that. And then they can do e email reminders for registration and, and stuff like that. And it sounds like it's a much better thing. And they'll put, like I said, the people can do what they want with it. They'll be able to, down the road, they'll be able to do the Hello Wallet. Does that make sense? Yep. Like said, they'll be able to do that and a few other things if they want to do that. Too, so, that too. so it sounds like that the Seymour Tax Collection Office is coming up in the... Yeah, this, this is... We've Right, but it just seems like it's becoming more well, advanced. More. We're, we're people are doing it more and more, yes, utilizing it more. And it'll be a lot easier to navigate with it, stuff like that for people that do it. Uh, any select board have any questions? If I may. Absolutely. Go easy. <laughs> <laughs> You'll see, Mr. Stinnick, that this is a fun board. <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> <laughs> I reserve comment. <laughs> <laughs> Until the end of the night first. <laughs> Dana, you mentioned that this is an, an extension of an existing contract. Correct. However, the, this document talks about the initial term being three years of this contract. <clears throat> right, so it would be like 
the other ones, I don't know, I don't even know exactly which date it expires, the other one, but this would be an upgrade and you would sign this and this would be in effect for three years. It will be in effect for yes. three years. Any way to negotiate it down to one year as an initial term, just in case you became dissatisfied with the company? I've been happy with them all along. Okay. It so renews the automatically. Car, like I said, the other company that pursued us, um, he was very aggressive in pursuing us, and we watched the demo and stuff like that, and some of the things in the demo were good, um, some weren't, okay. and we had questions, and I didn't like the idea of being, I, the other company being paying, and this company's been great. Okay. And we, like I said, it's people would ask for the service. We wanted to provide it a service with, with less work on our end and no cost to the town. We wanted it, if you want to use it, you use it. If you don't, you don't. There, there are fees. We tell them you to get money or to get a, you know, come in and ca cash or payment. Um, and we do that. And they, they've been paying online. We have not been taking payments in with the cards in the office. So by, by way of clarification, this is not an extension. This is a new contract, an upgrade. A it's an upgrade. Okay. And you're very satisfied with the services? Yes. Okay. Yes. I mean, we have a, once in a while we have a glitch, but they, they, they do it right away. They, you know, sometimes it's not available, but they tell you they have notifications from other places that weren't. Um, I haven't had any issues with them. Good. You know, but they, you know, they've responded to us pretty quickly, like I said. And we do the online, we do what they call the IDR through the phone and stuff. Um, another company was with that other company that pursued us way back when. They wanted to charge on that, so <coughs> just, they just gave it to us for free. I mean, they said, oh, we'll just... We have to do a lot of detective work with it to try to figure out what they're saying. And the only information we have is, is a phone number. Where when they do pay regularly with the credit card or debit card or the e check, we get their email, we get their phone number, and we get their address. But when they use the IVRs, it's all we do is get a phone number. So we end up having to call them. If we can't figure it out what the account is, we have to call the people up and say, What are you trying to pay? Once in a while we do have to avoid them. Because for some reason we get somebody from way out of Illinois. Seymour, or Indiana. Yeah. Somewhere. Anywhere. <laughs> we, 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 and that, it's not even that. It's a totally different town that they were trying to pay. And like we said, we can't really identify this account number. What are you trying to pay? And we said, who are you? Yeah, where are you? <laughs> so then we got to call them and cancel it. You know, I mean, right. avoid it out. But mm -hmm. other than that, it's fine. So I guess I just had a, a follow up to Fred's questions. Do you have any idea, Dana, how this company makes money then? If they put they this for free? Fees. They charge the fees. To, for the credit cards? Two and a half percent they get, and then and they get um, $3.95 for On the, every transaction? Every transaction. Okay, I just want to make sure. So it's $3 for the electronic check. Okay. There, you know, a lot of, I don't remember how many towns they use, um, but the invoice cloud is another company. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're affiliated with quality and stuff like that. So they're all, you know, Businesses are trying to build up sure. more business and stuff. Sure. So, I mean, but you're happy with the product? I'm, yeah. Like I said, the other one had a few more things that were good. And and I wasn't quite sure, but I did, I did not like the fees at all. Okay. Being charged. Yeah, well, those are up front. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, on, I the towns, on the Towns Act. Right. Yeah. And, and we're trying to offer a service. You want, you want that service. We provide it. You got to pay for it. Sure. If, if that's your option. Otherwise, could we still take checks? Now, is that clear when people go to pay online? It's clear to them that they're going to get hit? Two and a half percent. Well, if they use their MasterCard, it's three and a quarter or whatever. Yeah, yeah. It's $3.95. And it will be there. It will specify that. Like I said before, it just defaulted at credit card. Yeah. So people would automatically think that's, that's the only option. That's right. what they were paying. They put their card number in there like that. Sure. Because we do the motor vehicle currencies instant, well, instant. It's due right away if it's a Visa debit because it's coming out of it. Mm -hmm. And we'll say, do you can pay with Visa debit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's it. We look it up. You can pay with credit card. Yeah, they don't use Right. So this will take away all those phone should, calls, basically be wasting it's your it's time when, right you, when you could be doing other things. It should yeah. be credit cards, it should be debit cards, and it should be e check. And, it, it, like I said, and the fees are stated right under each one to use they, each I one? I believe they will be, but the you difference be, now with the debit card is that they're accepting the MasterCard. So okay. That's the thing. So there's not two different debit fees. Card debit card. Got right. It. So debit card is a is a Visa or flat card. fee, not the two and a half percent. Two and a half percent of your total right. bill. Yeah, that's the credit card. Yeah. But right. people, have, some people love that because they think they get their miles or whatever they want. Right. Right. Or there's a benefit to that. One, or they, or right. they're getting their, 
zero percent uh, interest for a year on right. the, with the check. Right. So they do it. The credit card, but they can pay that off on and stuff mm -hmm. like that. You know, whatever. We, we encourage that. Whatever works for them. We yeah. We encourage that when they back off with, 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 and they need to go, oh, I need to register my car. You know, is it anybody? We're mandated by the state, 18% a year, 1.5% per month. Mm -hmm. Or know. from a family member, anybody. It's mm -hmm. cheaper than us. You know, we, we know. encourage that. We try to do that. Sure. Yeah. And the debit is automatically is coming out, right, of the, out of the bank. right out of your bank account whereas the master charge you know yeah, you, got yeah. Yeah, you got 30 days you know mm -hmm. got it thank you thank you is there any other questions no great thank you so you know we discussed it and now we need to take action regarding the online tax payment agreement yeah, we suggest that And then we'll let the board know the, the tweaks so that they're comfortable with okay. it. For instance, I want to make it clear, you know, a few things. One is there's an attachment missing. I want to get that. I want to make it mm -hmm. clear uh, when the money's going to get deposited into the account. So there's no delay on the account. So you see money in one day. How fast we get into our account. Well, it's usually three days. We have, I want to get that, okay. get that in, in writing for them so they don't take any seven, fourteen. Right. Okay. So they're earning interest on the money and we're not. So moved. Motion by Bruno. Second it. Second by Alberno. Discussion? Point of order. Okay. Since this is a legal contract, I would suggest that the motion be more articulated, more detailed. Okay. Okay. I'd like to make a motion. <laughs> I'd, like to, I'd like to make a motion to approve the point and pay LLC e payment services agreement as discussed and allow town council to make the suggested modifications. How's that, Bri? Does that work? Second. Second by. Oh, wait, oh, wait. Uh, you yeah. second it. Second. Second. Yeah. Second. All right. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Motion carries <coughs> zero. Thank you. Discussion and possible action regarding the generator bid. In your packet, you have a um, list of the two RFPs that came in, one from A&J Generator and Equipment. It meets our technical specs, and it does, but it did not meet our bid spec. The price was $49,461. And we have another bid from Huntington Power, which meets our technical specs, meets our bid specs, and the price is $52,800. Tom, Amy is here to discuss and answer any questions you may have on that. Come on up, Tom. Say hello. We've missed you, Tom. Good evening, board. Tom, Amy, 50 Oral Lane. Sharing communications for more important ways to manage the direction of the town. About 15 years, I've been more on our managing the generator replacement program. And that's a well-lit Laurel Lane address, and you can see it from the satellite. <laughs> Holy heck, yeah. <laughs> we love For those it. that don't know, Tommy's house is thrilled for Christmas. It. We love it. Go ahead. Sorry. We digressed. Sorry, Tom. Uh, digressed. We started this uh, approximately two years ago. Our current generator was being used here. Yep. It died. We went into a rental for time being to stop. Things were going to happen. And then we went into COVID. We started back up, we're out of it. And of course, you see a price increase what we originally were expecting out. And, and that extremely due to COVID. And also on the back side of this, those vendors we discussed with had a 16 to 20 week delivery time frame for the ordinary order this generator. So that's what COVID has done to the rest of the American public is price increases and delays in receiving that commodity. Uh, generator size has increased. We had used to have a 50 kW here. Because of our project that we've done a few years ago here in upgrading heating and cooling, they added quite a bit to the electrical 
Any questions? So, Tom, in your opinion, as our point person, this is a non-negotiable, right? We, we need this for Correct. our community. Yeah. And, and the other thing that's happened since then, Rob Dyer, who is our IT director for the county on the school side, has done a tremendous job in upgrading uh, and failover clusters and, and mainframe equipment. So it's between the school side, the high school, and the town hall side. Both sides see each other, want to back up to each other. So this is key component why generation needs to be done in high school. Thank you. Mr. Amy, um, what specifically didn't meet the bid specs from A and J? Uh, the minimum basic requirements as far as a, a check to go along with the proof, there were some other proof requirements that were necessary in the performance package. And, and those were after talking with the vendor, they were uh, actually not able to work by the vendor. But again, uh, the way the bid specs were written, it, it had to be included in it, otherwise it was open for disqualification. Mm -hmm. I have no questions. Thank, Thank you. you. Tommy. We must take possible actions on the generator bid right now. Roy? Wish, I wish to put forward a motion to ex accept the bid from Huntington Power in the cost of $52,800. Second. Is that? Yeah, to, to award the uh, contract for the uh, town hall generator to have the power to lower qualified. Oh, it's qualified. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I amend my motion as such. It hope, and not to exceed. I think it's a flat amount. It's in the amount of $2,000. Tommy, is there a chance that it could exceed that with work orders, change orders? Not that we know in uh, change orders did not occur for this one. Okay. Okay. And better not. And better not. <laughs> All right. Uh, I have a motion by Chris Bowen. Second. Second by Alan Br Bruno. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Motion carries 5 0. Thank you, Tommy and Dana. Recognitions and celebrations. Um, to do, to do, to do, to do. So, on recognitions and celebrations, this is where we would normally um, put in our awards. I do want to say, under recognitions, our Pop Warner eight and under went our regional. No, they're not regional. State, uh, state champions. They played against uh, Rhode Island for uh, the regional and, and they lost, but they won. We have our football team that went into uh, states. This is where we normally would recognize them. I know we are gonna be giving out, uh, we will be giving out citation, proclamations, <coughs> and the state will be giving out citations to both our eight and under, our swimmers, our volleyball team, um, as well as our football team in the upcoming meetings. Um, so we'll let you all know when those are gonna be happening as well. Um, also, if you see in your packet, there is a letter um, that was given to Chief Sarkowski from Commander Fapiano. We um, took out, well, I like to say sanitized the report. Redacted. Thank you. <laughs> I say sanitized. Very good choice of words. You say redacted. <laughs> sanitize is EPA term. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would like to read, even though we put it into the minutes, I would like to read it into the record, if that's okay. 
Thank God you have a tape recorder going. This is to uh, Chief Sikowski from, Com from Commander Fapiano. Uh, it's regarding a case 21135. <coughs> it happened in November 8th, 2021 is when this letter was sent to him. It says, on October 21, 21, officer from day shift and detective responded to um, a call after the department received a 911 call reporting that the mail party from the uh, called a friend from AA. The mail party was depressed and told a friend that he was in the woods near his house with a gun and that he was going to kill himself. Officers quickly responded to the area and we established a command post. With the suicide mail's location unknown, officers observed the residence and surrounding wood line and a parameter was quickly set up. Officer Santinelli was dispatched was dispatching at the time and attempted to ping the mail's phone to gather a location from him and appeared that the cell phone was turned off. I also attempted to call the phone on scene and the phone was turned off. Officer Oskowski assisted the, with attempting to locate the male as he is familiar with the party as well as the member of the suicidal male's family. Officer Oskowski was able to make contact with an immediate family member who responded to the scene to assist. During this time, Officer Wilcox, along with training officer Fushian and Officer Erdman, were observing the residence while Officer Shirk and Mara remained in the area of the, on the perimeter. While on scene, Seymour Ambulance Chief Ryan, uh, Brian Ryan responded to the scene and assisted with staging an ambulance to stand by in the area until the man was located and to assist in the event that emergency medical staff were needed. Inspector Matasovich was notified of the incident and he along with Detective Jasmine responded to the scene to assist. While on scene, a male party exited the house walking across the street heading towards the woods on the riverside. Officers made contact with the male party as he was walking across the street and he complied with officers' commands. He was quickly detained and upon a search of his person, Officer Oskowski lo located a loaded gun in the small of his back. Officer Oskowski, being familiar with the individual, was able to get him to open and talk with the officers. He informed the officers that he had been depressed, upset, and he did mention that he wanted to kill himself. The handgun as seized and an NCIC check indicated the mail party had numerous weapons registered. During this time, Inspector Matasovich and Detective Jasmine were able to secure written consent to search the property for other weapons, and it was determined that a risk warrant would follow. The detective division was assisted by Officer Wilcox and Officer Fujian, and during the course of the investigation, no other weapons were found in the residence and it appeared that a few of the weapons were previously reported as stolen in Ansonia. Ultimately, the suicidal male party was transported to Griffin Hospital on a police emergency examination request, a PER form, where he would be able to seek treatment and help. I would like to command the officers and detectives involved through their extraordinary teamwork, exceptional professional skills, and conduct during this incident, they were able to get a male party the help and treatment that he very much needed. This is only one of the letters and one of the incidents that had happened. October 30th, there was a motorcycle accident on Derby Avenue. And if it wasn't for um, one of our fast acting officers, the gentleman would have lost his life. By the op applied a tourniquet. Yep, she put the tourniquet on her life. And by applying that tourniquet, it saved the gentleman's life. I have seen um, a lot of our, our police force, our police force is asked a lot of, and I would like to start with this board going to our police, uh, our board of police commissioners and commendations come from the police department, but letters for the police officers from our board get put into their personnel files. And I think it's important that we recognize the good that our men and women in blue do for our town and acknowledge how much they give of themselves. Um, so I just wanted to let you guys know that that is what I'm going to do and I will probably be going to their uh, December meeting to present the letters to the officers here as well as the officer from the Derby Avenue incident. Um, and if any of you would like to go with except for I can't have a quorum, 
Just let me know. Very good. Okay. So that's that. I know, it's kind of long, sorry. It's heavy. It was heavy, but they, they, they deal with a lot. Yeah. Huh? <clears throat> um, we approve the meetings. Appointments in your file, in your folder packet. There's an appointments for January 7th, 2021. We will go one by one. Kurt normally does them line by, uh, just these are appointments, anybody has any issues with them. But we're going to go one by one. Yeah. Give everybody the chance. To I always had an issue with that, just for the record. But thank you for doing it one by one. No problem. So, uh, Birchman Moses, PC Town Council. It's a reappointment for two years. Expiration date is 12 7 2023. So moved. <clears throat> Motion by Pat. Thank you, Pat Lombardi. Second by Chris Bowen. All in favor? Aye. 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 Chair votes aye, motion carries 5-0. Birchman Moses PC Town Council Workers Workman's Compensation, reappointment, two years, 12-7-2023. So moved. Motion by Second. Pat, second by Chris Bowen. All in favor? Aye. aye. Chair votes aye, motion carries 5-0. Birchman Moses PC Town Council Labor, reappointment, two years, 12-7-2023. So moved. Motion by? Seconded. Chris Bowen, second by Pat Lombardi. All in favor? Aye. Or discussion? Aye. Sorry. All in favor? Chair votes aye. Motion you. I, I, you know what? I think I should probably abstain from all three now that I'm thinking about it. I'm going to abstain from all three, okay? Yeah. I didn't catch it. Sorry. Yeah. Mo, m no, uh, Selectman Bruno's abstention from um, Town Council, Town Council Workman's Comp, Town Council Lawyer. Thank you. Thank you. Marino, Zabel, and Schellenberg, Town Council, Land Use, Boards, Reappointment, two years, 12 7 2023. So moved. Motion by Alberno. Second. Second by Pat Lombardi. Discussion? All in favor? <coughs> aye. aye. Chair votes aye. Motion carries 5 0. Ben Proto, Town Council, WPCA, to reappointment, two years, 12 7 2023. So moved. Motion by Chris Bowen, second by Al Bruno. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Motion carries 5 0. Shipman and Goodwin LLP, Town Council bonding, reappointment, two years, 12 7 2023. So moved. Motion by Al Bruno. Seconded. Second by Pat Lombardi. Discussion? <coughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Motion carries <laughs> 5 0. BB Engineering. Um, I chose to stay with Brian Nesteriak. I think he's done really well with us. Um, very community, especially on the roads and everything. Town engineer, reappointment, two years, 12 7 2023. So moved. Discussion? So, so, so moved by Pat Lombardi, second. It was Chris, Chris Bowen. Sorry, discussion. Chair vote. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Chair votes aye. Motion carries 5-0. Navis and Young, the engineer for the WPCA. It's a reappointment. Two years, 12-7-2023. So moved. Motion by Alberno. I'll second the motion. Second by Fred Stanek. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Motion carries 5-0. Priscilla Altorelli, cultural and arts reappointment. Three years, 12-7-2023. I move to reappoint Priscilla Altarelli to the second. Culture and Arts Commission. Fred's motion by Fred Stanek, second by Al Bruno. Sure discussion. Discussion. I have a feeling you're going to say the yeah. same thing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm just questioning the year because it's three years, but they're 2023. Right. 2024, please note the change to 2024. Okay. Okay. Just to be. Just to be clear, we've got the term right. It's a three-year appointment. Yes. All in favor? Aye. aye. Chair votes aye. Motion carries 5-0. Rory Burke, Chief of Staff, reappointment two years, 12-7-2023. So moved. Second. Second. <coughs> Discussion? Notice I was the first one. <laughs> Chair votes Lots aye. Motion carries 5-0. <laughs> 
Rob Van Egan, WPCA. Reappointment, so four years. Second the motion. Motion by Chris Bowen, second by Fred Stanick. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. aye. Chair votes aye. Motion carries 5 0. Rick Dumpko, Zoning Board of Appeals. It's a reappointment for four years. So well, moved. Motion by Pat Lombardi. Seconded. Second by Chris Bowen. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Chair votes aye, 5 0. Kristen Hanowitz, Zoning Board of Appeals, is an appointment for four years. It's a new appointment, 12 7 2025. So moved. Motion by Chris Bowen. Second. Second by Al Bruno. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Motion carries 5 0. John Duke, Zoning Board of Appeals, it's an appointment, four years, 12 7 2025. So moved. Motion by Al Bruno. Second. Second by Chris Bowen. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Chair votes aye, 5 0. Paul Wedowitz, Zoning Board of Appeals, alternate. It's an appointment for four years, 12 7 2025. So moved. Motion by Chris uh, Bowen. Second. Second by Pat Lombardi. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Abstains? Noes? Chair votes ayes, 5 0. Sven Rittweger. He's on the Parks and Recs. It's an appointment for two years, 12 7 2023. So moved. Motion by Alberna. Seconded. Second by Chris Bowen. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. aye. Chair votes aye. Motion carries 5 0. Anne Marie Dragonis, Ordinance Committee, reappointment, two years, 12 7 2023. Move the appointment. Second. Fred Stanick, motion. Chris Alberno, second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 I, I abstain. Mo note to chair, 401. Thank you. Bob Finley, Ordinance Committee, to reappointment, two years, 12 7 2023. So moved. Discussion? Oh, motion by Pat Lombardi, second by Chris Bowen. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. aye. Chair votes aye. Motion carries 5 0. Fred Stianick, Ordinance Committee. It's an appointment of two years, 12 7 2023. So moved. Motion by Chris Bruno, second uh, Chris Bowen, mo second by Al Bruno. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Abstain. I abstain. Chair votes aye. Motion 401. Motion for a note for Stanick's um, abstention. Trish Danka, she can't say no. Tax incentive <laughs> subcommittee, reappointment, two years, 12 7, 2023. So, so moved. <laughs> <laughs> Motion by Pat Lombardi, second by Chris Bowen. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. aye. Chair votes aye. Motion carries 5 0. Sorry, you missed the meeting, Trish. Chris Bowen, tax incentive to reappointment, two years. I'll move the appointment. 12 7, 2023. Fred Stanick. Second. Second by Al Bruno. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Abstain. Chair votes aye. 4 0 1. Note Chris Bowen's abstention. Bob Finley. That he's not here either. Tax incentive yeah. subcommittee. <laughs> Reappointment, two years, 12 7, 2023. So moved. Second. So moved by Pat Lombardi, second by Al Bruno. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. aye. Chair votes aye. Motion carries 5 0. See, I told you, Mr. Stanick, this is such a fun board. <laughs> Tax refunds and abatement. It's the withholding judgment. <laughs> <laughs> Um, for any you have the tax abatement from Christine Gennetti, she's the assistant tax collector. Please look it over to make sure that you have no issues. And that your name does not appear on this list. My name does not appear on this list. No, no, me. Oh, that your name does not appear on this list or your family members <clears throat> or friends, mm -hmm. distant relatives. <laughs> Have a motion to approve? So moved. Motion by Alberna. Seconded. Second by Pat Lombardi. Discussion? All in favor? 
Aye. Chair votes aye, motion carries 5-0. We discussed the discussion and items for consent agenda. Discussion passed motion. So on the, um, in your packet, you have a proposed ordinance. And this proposed ordinance um, will get moved to the ordinance committee. I will read the proposed ordinance into the record. All references in any ordinance, regulation, code, executive order, policy, or other document generated by the government or of the town of Seymour to first select man and or first select men are hereby amended to substitute the term first select person and select persons. And all references in this ordinance, regulations, codes, executive orders, policy, and other documents to the term his shall be su substituted with the phrase his or her. To the extent that the use of the term first select person and select persons is inconsistent with the use of terms first select man and select men as used in the Town Seymour Charter or general statutes. Regulations, policies, executive orders, directives, or other documents passed, approved, or otherwise utilized by the State of Connecticut or any governmental department or agency thereof, the term first select person and select persons shall have the same meaning as first select man and first select men as otherwise used in the Town of Seymour Charter or used by the State of Connecticut in such documents. I just became the first select woman. Sorry. Okay. Discussion. <laughs> So this is the proposed ordinance. As you know, um, Karen was a big person to make sure that we are all equally um, recognized. She even wanted the first select woman to be there, and that's why you first select woman. Um, so we're going to propose this ordinance, move this proposed ordinance to the ordinance committee. I'll make a motion to refer the proposed ordinance to the ordinance committee. Motion by second. Fred Stanek, second by Al Bruno. Discussion? This is long overdue. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's no issue with this in my mind. Okay. I have spoken to State Representative Nicole Colertis Ditria about why, as to why the State of Connecticut, the legislature, has not taken this similar action in the, legis in the statute with regard to statutes. She said she wants to propose something in the next session. So this is something we can start at the local level. Any other questions, comments? Oh, I'm, I'm waiting for Brian because he's reading something. I, have, I just have a little bit of And then the project change too. Okay. But only because the way it's written, you're, you're saying that And or select persons as acceptable. Right. You don't want both to be substituted more or less later. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But if the first select person wanted to be called the first select man or the first select woman, they could. You need to call yourself whatever you want. Thank you. Great. I'm only the second woman to hold this position. Here she is. Your picture. She used to be in here. The cute one. Is in, over here. She's over there. She's over there. Right oh, there. there she is. Good. All right. I'm sure there'll be further discussion and further edits uh, in the committee. Sure. Okay. All in favor? Aye. aye. Chair votes aye. Motion carries 5 0. I'd like to add to have a motion to add to the agenda the Board of Selectmen 2022 meeting schedules. So moved. Motion by Al. Second. Second by Chris. Discussion? Okay. No, just, I would just note that I think it would be appropriate if we could get our depository clerk, being our town clerk, to send out a notification to all boards and commissions very early in November to get their schedule of meetings for the following year 
submitted in a timely manner so that they are meeting compliance with 1 20, excuse me, 1 225 of the Freedom of Information Act. That would be my suggestion. Good idea. You did send it out to the board. You sent it out to the Board of Finance, right? No, well, it was sent out. She, she, I thought she sent it out to our board. Nope. I have to look at this email, which I don't think I even saved it. But I know I did get a notification. That's why I came across the attention of that. So because this will not be our January December our December 21st meeting but our January 4th meeting is not 30 days so our January 4th meeting will be a special, special meeting. meeting yep so our agenda will be set we will not be able to add or change our agenda that day that is correct okay Lori Yeah, you're right. Okay. So just a question for Rory, if I may. Go ahead. So none of these dates, <clears throat> none of these dates conflict with any legal holidays. That town hall would be closed. Okay. Yeah, we need to be a little bit better on getting, getting that notice out to get our annual meeting schedule done. Yeah. We need a little tickler in a calendar or something because that. Well, pu public Works did not get one. Yeah. That's neither here. But well, we need there. to remind all our boards. That's neither near the in here. Fairness, right. Boards and commissions that I have served on previously, we have always done it in November so that we avoid the 30-day rule, if you will. Sure. The well, it is a rule. Yeah. yeah. Now we gotta have, have to have a special meeting, yep. really for no reason, but. Lesson learned. And exactly. Yep. That's it. Okay. Nothing can't be fixed. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. First select woman's report. So do we need to approve those? Oh, yeah. oh we need to approve these meetings. <laughs> you want to add? Yeah, we need to approve it. Have we it approved. A motion? So Someone. Motion by Chris Bruno. Bowen, second by Al Bruno. That's twice. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Chair votes aye. Motion carries 5 0. Okay. Oh, we have to go into yep. an executive session. Yeah, yep. 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 Okay, can I have a motion to go into an executive session? I don't want to hit that. And Rory. Yep. Have a motion? So moved. Motion by Pat Lombardi, second by Chris Bowen. All in favor? Aye. 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 Chair votes five. Five. See, I'm eating. Gene. Five. In August? Yes. Yeah. I did. I have a whole new level of respect for that board. Yeah, we got beat up pretty good. Yeah. That was. That oh, when the woman came in screaming? No, I was thinking of the one during the height of the pandemic. Oh. I didn't get a chance to watch that meeting. Yeah. My wife was like, I guess that woman was right near my wife's ear. And she's like, oh my God. Well, we were at. I don't know if you were, we were at Jimmy's because yeah. uh, I forget what we had going on. So you on. might want to okay. wait. Okay. Um, Maria, what is Hi, this James. no before training? Uh, I'm not going to. coming back? Paul had to go in and talk to her. I'm, what if I don't Just let do her know. It. I thought the police were coming to escort her. Mm -hmm. yeah, people are nuts. I do like that ice rink. schedule that you put in front of me. Okay, go ahead. As you know, 